Buenas tardes. Eh, yo voy a hablar en castellano porque me aterra hablar en público, imaginaos en inglés, pero la próxima me la prepararé en catalán además. ¿eh? Eh, bueno, es un placer estar aquí en este track de democracia directa. He estado escuchando las diferentes eh, experiencias que se, ha ido, que se han ido trasladando y la verdad es que me ha encantado enormemente escuchar a la compañera de Álava hablando como los consejos en Álava pues, eh, era una experiencia que podría remontarse a la edad media de democracia directa. Eh, también como Galapín ha contado las enormes dificultades que implican poner en marcha mecanismos de democracia directa por los diferentes poderes fácticos que acechan a la ciudad y como también es un, un contexto muy complejo que, por el cual probablemente las democracias no están pensadas o para ello hoy en día. Y, y he valorado enormemente también la, a Pablo Soto como ha hecho una autocrítica pensando también en nuevos mecanismos porque la democracia directa que se pone en marcha pues tiene que ser un continuo flujo de innovación ¿no? que nos permita que nos permita llegar a soluciones mejores. ¿no? En esto nos encontramos ahora en, en cómo, cómo la tecnología digital, las tecnologías digitales nos pueden de alguna forma facilitar o, o permitir eh, poner en marcha estos dispositivos de democracia directa que, que tanto ansiamos. Y bueno, más allá de esas, eh, esos sueños ciberpunks de los 70, pues hoy en día tenemos eh, software, aplicaciones y sistemas que nos permiten hacer eh, de ello una realidad. Sin más, voy a darle paso a Xavier, que es investigador y también miembro del equipo de Decidim. Gracias, Rosu. Thank you. Pedro, uh, let's be democratic. Who is okay with English? Raise your hands, please. Ok. ¿A quién le viene bien el castellano? Levantad vuestra mano. Vale. Gana English, uh, winner. And so, for, by direct democracy, I, I'm, I'm going to speak in English. Uh, minorities will have a direct translation, a direct democracy and direct translation. And so, everybody is happy. Um, Uh, I need my no speaking without PowerPoint. Okay, now good. Um, so the um, this session was about uh, digital technologies uh, for direct democracy, and uh, the, the, there are like two big uh, models of democracy, as everybody knows, representative democracy, we are in here dealing with this morality, um, direct democracy, uh, community initiatives, people pushing their own agenda and the will of the people forward is participatory and direct democracy. But there is a lot of space in between. If we, if we think about direct and indirect democracy, we have the two uh, extreme examples of uh, representative democracy, any, any, any representative chamber uh, is, is a good example. And obviously, perhaps the referendum is, is the most uh, well-known example of direct democracy, where the people without intermediate uh, representatives or other, other powers or other structures mediating their uh, democratic rights, they exercise this uh, decision-making capacity. But there is a lot of space in between, so maybe we can take the example of participatory budgeting that has some part of filtering or elaboration by some mediation, mediating technical uh, uh, public servants, for example, or maybe a, a demonstration. A demonstration is very powerful. It can have an impact and change public policies, but it's not legally a structured way of um, uh, influencing government, but it's effective and a network campaign. So there is a lot of con uh, change there or continuity between the direct and indirect extremes of, of democracy. And this space in 
between is uh, currently being filled by uh, very influential corporate social networks. We know that with a lot of examples uh, recently in, in Brazil, WhatsApp being intoxicated massively by economic and technological powers that could uh, exercise this influence. Uh, it happened on Facebook in different elections and on, on different even direct democracy examples like Brexit. Uh, so people were, the, the, the will of the people was directly manipulated by artificial intelligence, big data analytics, a lot of uh, technological power that is not uh, socialized within networks that are not public space of peaceful deliberation between equals. Uh, so we, we, our project and, and the experience I want to bring to this table is DECIDIM, the uh, political participatory democracy network of uh, Barcelona. And uh, we, is, is, this is a digital platform that wants uh, to cover the widest spectrum from the direct to the indirect uh, uh, participatory democracy. And uh, I will first uh, talk about the city in Barcelona, which is the, this software installed uh, for the service of city council. This project was and is still su supported and originated in, in, in Barcelona city council. And uh, there are more than 30,000 citizens uh, registered, uh, many different participatory processes. Uh, th almost a thousand uh, public meetings have been uh, called for through the platform and the minutes and pictures and the proposals made in these meetings, organs, is, is a complex democratic system that I'll explain in a minute. Uh, the software is ready for anybody else to use and is governed by a community that is called the meta deciding community that uses this software to uh, democratically design the features uh, of how should we decide. This is why it's called meta decidim. Decidim means we decide in Catalan, by the way. Uh, so as a case study, I'll bring here, because this is what this session is about, about bringing case studies uh, of direct democracy, in, in our case, technologically mediated, um, and is the case of strategic planning in Barcelona. is so far the most powerful example of uh, participatory and direct democracy carried out through the platform. Um, I, I, I'm going to tell you the story of, of, of a user. We don't know the, who this person is. So this is, we, we only know the nickname of this person. This is very important because uh, the system has a system by which uh, we guarantee anonymity to the users, but it's still verification. So we know that you are a citizen from Barcelona. We don't know which one you are. And this is, this is a principle of privacy that is embedded on the, on the very platform. And so this person visited the website and it found out that it was an open call for citizens to make proposals for the strategic planning of the four-year mandate period of the new government. And uh, she or he did a proposal uh, specifically uh, and uh, asking for uh, a free telephone uh, assistance from city council. It, this proposal was debated by different people on the platform. Uh, it gathered uh, different uh, supports, like votes of people supporting this initiative. Uh, it was uh, shared in social networks. It was discussed in a public meeting. Uh, so public meetings almost uh, 600 public meetings were carried out to discuss the citizen proposals for the strategic planning of the city. And this one uh, was debated. And you can uh, visit the minutes and see the statistics of this meeting, how many people went there, how many people supported this. And uh, finally, it was accepted uh, and included on the, on the strategic plan of the city. And now this person can audit, and everybody, uh, the level of execution of this uh, proposal that was finally accepted and became public policy. And this one is 94% uh, is completed. We do actually have a free uh, citizen call center some, 
so, so to speak, and uh, you can audit and see not only the level of execution, but all the changes made to this project, because maybe as it is implemented, there are changes that take place on, on how the project should evolve. Overall, this strategic planning uh, had a huge uh, conversation network behind. We can map this. We can really see the potential of uh, direct democracy through uh, the digital means. And uh, it was a huge participatory process with over almost 40,000 participants, out of which uh, 1,700 were organizations that already mobilized uh, different social networks. Uh, they, well. Actually, I'm going to go fast, uh, but uh, we're talking here about almost 10,000 proposals made by citizens, out of, out of which 72% were became public policy and are now uh, projects that one can follow the level of execution in, in detail. It's, uh, here you can see how uh, our big data vis visualization for the accountability of this decision once taken, how far it's been executed. We have a 75.9% seven, of execution right now in Barcelona of this strategic plan. It covers 40% of the municipal budget. So it's a huge percentage of uh, public power being open to citizen participation. Um, but uh, the city in Barcelona has much more than this example. There are many other features. They are all backed up, and this is very important, that uh, a big challenge for Barcelona has been to run in parallel a, a project of uh, computer code and legal code, and they both uh, done uh, parallel paths. Uh, everything that you see here is uh, matched by a legal framework that guarantees that your exercise of direct democracy is properly uh, legally acknowledged. And every uh, right that you have at the level of uh, direct democracy and participatory democracy at City Council has a digital counterpart where you can execute it. Because we've seen in previous examples and other places in the world that some uh, rights have no channel, no ways in which you can execute those rights uh, easily. And participatory democracy is, is, is a very typical example where obstacles are made on the administrative level to avoid certain initiatives to uh, be, move on. The good thing about computers is that they have to obey what the code says. And any citizen can audit the code and see what happens when she pushes a button. So this is a, a further level of transparency and, uh, and very important for, for democracy. Uh, it, Two minutes. Uh, okay. Well, there have been almost 13, more than 13,000 proposals made uh, through the CDIM. Every proposal is, is a card. People can interact. Uh, this website is not about information. It's about interaction. So people can connect, share, vote, uh, comment, debate, amend. Uh, relate to others. Well, it's, it's a complicated uh, system, but it has a very intuitive user experience, uh, almost like uh, some of the social networks you might be familiar with, like Twitter or Facebook. Uh, I'm just showing you some examples. Uh, right now in Barcelona, there are more than uh, 36 participatory processes that have been open, out of which 17 are still ongoing, and people keep participating every day. Uh, just some, some examples also of citizen initiatives that, independently of the government, opening an opportunity for people to participate. You can also use the platform to uh, collect signatures for uh, citizen initiatives, uh, and also participatory organs, uh, different councils, uh, working groups of city council are progressively moving their activity to the platform. And uh, finally, I wanted to uh, say that th th this uh, uh, experience of having a digital infrastructure to push and facilitate direct democracy is being adopted and extended to more than 50 different organizations ranging from uh, regional governments to obviously other city councils like Helsinki, but also associations or cooperatives. And this is very interesting for us to see how uh, 
different social movements even, and people that want to democratize their organizations, they are using the software, which is very important to us. It's not only institutional democracy that we are promoting, but democracy across all the scales. Uh, which is fundamental. And this is only possible because this project is a public common partnership, uh, is open to anybody to collaborate, is free to use and reinstall, and there's a whole ecosystem behind it that is organized democratically. And as we like to say, we eat our own dog food, meaning that we use our own software to organize the development of the software democratically. I think this is a very interesting, also, uh, example of developing the infrastructures for democracy in a democratic manner. And uh, I'm going to finish with this, only telling you, don't forget that we are hosting a conference on this software uh, on Wednesday, so around here as well. And so you are all welcome. It's a free conference and open to everyone. And also, we have a stand. So if you want to know a bit more, visit us, and we enjoy a nice conversation democratically. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Xavier. Y vamos a continuar con la intervención de Margeta, que trabaja en el Ayuntamiento de Helsinki y bueno, que ahora nos va a presentar su propuesta. In the base. Yes. Right. Thank you. Um, it's wonderful to be here. Already met great people and learned a lot. Uh, my name is Marietta Peltonen. I'm from uh, the city of Helsinki, Finland. Uh, I work for the city executive office, and our team uh, takes charge of uh, developing and maintaining a participatory. Uh, digital platforms for all departments of the city of Helsinki. I'll try to share you some uh, concrete experiences of uh, how to use digital technologies to co-create a better city of Helsinki. Now Helsinki strives to be the most functional city in the world and it's clear that to achieve this goal we really need to use digital technologies. We believe that uh, the good user experience of the city is, is made through combination of digital technologies, dialogue and design. I think that uh, digital technologies should be considered as a tool uh, that makes uh, interaction more easy and more transparent. I think this approach is also uh, in line with the ethical digital standards that the city of Barcelona has published. Now, I drew, I drew this iceberg model to demonstrate that the digital technology or the digital platform that's supposed to engage the citizens only plays a small role in the di digital engagement of the citizens. Uh, I think the digital engagement should not be driven by what the technology can do, but instead by what is the really the need of the city or what is the need of the citizens. And to understand this need, we use the methods of service design and we also engage ourselves in dialogue. Um, we also need uh, offline methods to reach those who do not use digital tools because they face barriers in using them or because simply they don't want to use them. Uh, in the Nordic countries, uh, cities like Helsinki takes care of a uh, large scale of services. Uh, in some other countries, these services belong to the state. Helsinki produces more than 1,000 services for its 6, uh, 650,000 residents. Uh, I think that democracy is not only about engagement in political decision making but it's also about how the citizens can participate in the management of those services. Actually, I learned this also this morning from some other session. Uh, and, and we've uh, 
we have realized that the citizens actually want to have a say to the development of those services that they use. Now, um, we have a number of platforms that enable the citizens to have a say uh, of how to allocate, allocate the public resources or send us ideas or have a say, uh, say to how a certain city areas should be planned. I'm not going to go through of all of them here, but instead I, I chose uh, one system, the feedback system, digital feedback system, that helps us to co-create functional and equal services with the citizens. Um, we receive approximately 55,000 service feedbacks from the citizens every year. These are uh, different kinds of questions and ideas that the citizens send us. It's the feedback system is a very bottom-up platform in a sense that we don't decide what the citizens contact, contact us about, but they decide what's meaningful for them. And I think the citizens are, are uh, the ones who guard actually the quality of public services. They are the first ones to notice is, if something's broken, if something's hard to use, if something's hard to find, if something's unequal, or if something's working extremely well, which also some, <laughs> sometimes comes as, as feedback. Um, so we receive very much all types of uh, ideas, questions and complaints. We've tried making, uh, giving feedback as easy as possible. We have an online form. Uh, we have also a mobile app and an API that anyone can use for creating a feedback channel. Uh, we take care of directing the question or the feedback to the right person in the city, so the citizen doesn't need to know to whom it belongs to. Uh, we want to meet the citizens also in other platforms than, than the ones that we are creating ourselves. This means, for example, uh, social, me uh, social media channels. Uh, for example, we are piloting a feedback bot in Twitter. And the idea in this experiment is that uh, the citizens have a new feedback channel in Twitter. And also, uh, this experiment uh, has the goal of helping the city communication specialists and other public servants to deal with uh, complicated questions that they cannot answer in Twitter directly. And the feedback bot will also allow uh, the public servants to send the answer to the fees feedback back to Twitter. Uh, next, let, let's look at um, another type of a feedback channel. Uh, this is a traditional cardboard box, and uh, it can be actually found in the lobby of the new healthcare and well-being center in Helsinki. It's really not very far from uh, the pepper robot that's guiding and amusing the customers in the lobby. But this box is very uh, useful for those who do not use digital tools. Uh, we're paying attention to uh, gathering uh, feedback more systematically also by using uh, the ready-made commercial tools to get a better overview of, of the quality of our services. Uh, for example, in the home care, uh, in eight months, uh, the customers <coughs> gave more than 100,000 quick feedback through this new uh, feedback device. Now, I think it's really easy to put up a channel uh, through which you can get in ideas or information or feedback from the citizens. But once you get tens of thousands of replies or ideas, you also uh, need to be able to deal with the data or the ideas to really use it to change something in the city. 
And I think this is uh, something where uh, the digital technologies can help us. Um, we are piloting uh, text analytics to make better use of the feedback data. Uh, and uh, the text analytics tools can automatically recognize what topics the citizens are talking about and what's the sentiment of the messages. So how positive or how negative the feedback or ideas we get in have been. And the goal in, in using text analytics uh, is to reduce the administrative burden and really to provide the uh, public servants the best possible tools to analyze um, the data that uh, the citizens have produced. <coughs> and I must say that uh, it's much more complicated to do this in Finnish <laughs> language than in English, so <laughs> we're a bit <laughs> bit behind maybe in the general development. Um, one thing that digital technologies cannot do yet, they cannot replace uh, the public servants or the human beings in uh, constructive and good quality dialogue. And that's why it's really important to train the public servants in how to give very well articulated answers, answers to the citizens' feedback. Uh, we are doing this, for example, by giving uh, 10 tips for responding to citizens' feedback. It's not a very quick fix. It needs, it needs lots of time to train all the public servants to uh, know how to facilitate the process and, and to really empower them so that they believe they can make a change in the organization. Uh, now we get uh, loads of ideas uh, in the feedback of how to make Helsinki a better city. And we've seen, we recognize the uh, need to really boost the realization of these ideas. So we are implementing uh, participatory budgeting for the first time this year. Uh, we are using the Decidim platform for this. And actually right now uh, the citizens are submitting proposals to our online platform. <coughs> Two minutes. Uh, Helsinki is among the forerunners of opening data. Uh, we've published also uh, part of the feedback data using the standardized Open 311 interface, and we strive to publish even more. Uh, you may imagine that the G GDPR legislation uh, needs to be dealt with when you publish uh, open text produced by the citizens. Actually, I'm already uh, ready to conclude my presentation by stating that a functioning city is more of a park than a factory. Um, this means that the idea of co-creation co should be, should cut through um, all the services that the city takes care of. And I think uh, that the digital technologies can help us in this task. Um, if they want to, if the digital technology wants to help us, uh, they should fulfill their promise for first, easier interaction, and then second, um, less administrative burden for the public servants so that they actually have a time uh, to make a difference and to engage properly in dialogue with the citizens. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Y continuamos con la siguiente intervención, que es de a que está a cargo de Yusan Chen, que es investigadora y actualmente doctoranda en la Universidad de Durham.
Es que yo solo, solo uso Linux, entonces eh, pasan estas cosas. Ok, go ahead. Um, hi everyone, um, my name is Xu Shantun, I'm, I'm a PhD student from Durham University and um, so my work involves uh, Design Madrid and Vita One, because probably that's why I'm here now. Um, so first of all, I, I would like to say it's, it's really my pleasure to present my work in progress, so it hasn't been a conclusion now in um, IOPD, and uh, I would like to say thank you very much for Madrid City Hall and Tai Taiwanese central government for their support on my, in my field work, uh, I can conduct an interview with key persons and I collect loads of data. So yeah, thank, thank, <laughs> thanks for them. And then um, also thank IOPD and Pablo Alagón for giving me this uh, opportunity to present my preliminary findings. So yeah, no conclusion. Um, and actually, I'm really inspired by what Javier and uh, Madrata talk about. I think I'm kind of, I think we have some cons consensus about how we think of digital technology. So it's a really good panel. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to talk about, it looks a bit confusing, but uh, the trajectories of digital urban politics through the case of um, cases of V Taiwan and Design Matri. I guess in, in, in Javier's words, uh, it, was, uh, it can be explained that those digital open source digital platforms are actually born uh, from a democratic demonstration. They, they, they have some uh, relationship of, of the, the Occupy movement, which I'm going to talk about. Uh, and um, so first of all, yeah, I will talk about why, I, why I'm comparing those two platforms and the reason behind it. Um, I'm coming from uh, urban planning, urban geography. So the, there's some scholars talk about comparing uh, cities. They, they are di very different from each other across the global south and north. And, um, well, it, the reason to compare is just to create a kind of dialogue to, to learn from each other, no matter, you know, you are from a developing country or from a developed country. We can all learn from each other. And that can kind of create a relational planetary perspective of understand the urbans. Or, well, now, now I guess I'm kind of stealing this um, geographical imaginary to, to the digital urban um, field. And then I try to use that to compare to those two case studies. So I guess it's uh, when, where does all this story started, it can be traced back to, to the Occupy movement. So it is when this movement, um, the digital technology uh, encounter urban politics. Well, it, I would say demonstration is part of the, the urban politics, um, both in Taipei and Madrid. Um, from, from, you can see a various types of digital technology from the hashtag in Twitter or hapag from LimeString to N minus one were brought into creating the politics with citizens. So this kind of digital politics, as uh, Alberto uh, argues, reinvent the political role of cities and where other scholars, Javier's and loads of uh, scholars in Barcelona has been working on and they try to make sense of it. And th that's really amazing. And so to me, I will say digital technologies, they are, they are brought into a kind of political actors during the, the Occupy movement. They are not just object per se, but political actor enable, enabling real-time decision and uh, real-time information, but also what is more important is they allow the public to imagine a different forms of politics. So from this, um, this student, she was saying that she was involved, she's just a participant, like ordinary citizen in a some form movement, the, the Occupy movement Taipei, she said, I have no imagination before the movement, and now, you know, because this is, this is a public demonstration, and from that, you know, it belongs to a public, so she starts to imagine, uh, different kinds of uh, society the citizen wants and then by by rejecting the black box decision making so I guess that's where the older stories start and then but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that there is only one trajectory of digital urban politics that uh, comes from the occupied movement there are many of them there are burgeoning in Madrid and Taiwan, but given the limited scale of my research, I'm going to focus on these two trajectories that I identified. Um, 
Um, so you can see that's the, the, the Madrid one after 15M, and there are some key actors, CV hackers, established the, the lab lab demos. And then, well, they, they tried to convince the uh, Podemos party to use Lumio, and then uh, eventually they established uh, Aula Madrid, and then Design Madrid was born. And 2015, and then the second one is after some fall movement, there are some experiments in one of the CV hacking organization, the name is Gov Zero. They have some hackathons and informal meeting with the publication, pu publication, um, politicians and lobbying them, try to convince them to create, uh, you know, a more open uh, public participation. I, I will talk about this uh, a little bit more because you are probably less uh, familiar with. So. Um, yeah, so this is like, so after the Occupy movement, the Ministry of uh, Economy um, Development, he, he confessed that the previous uh, like, uh, way of doing public participation is like paternalism. So it's, it's a failure because the, 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 argument, the government always assumes what the public wants, but they, they don't know what they really want. So they have some reflection, you can see. This uh, the interview with the senior of, senior officer in, in central government. He said some foreman has a lot of impact in, in the ruling party and the government because they 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 know they want to hear what the citizen wants through the digital technology because they see the power of digital technology in the occupied movement. So. So that's, that's why one of the minister Tsai, um, Minister Tsai, she proposed the, the project Vita one in one of the Gov Zero uh, hackathon. Yeah. So um, now, now I will I will focus. Um, yeah, I will focus on the two platforms themselves. How, what kind of processes they created? It's actually echoing what Majeta said. The, the collaborative, the interactive processes that digital tools enable. Um, I actually feel the same because, well, this uh, key actor in Madrid and uh, Taiwan, they also say if it's a quite hard, if it's a high quality conversation, it has to be interactive and has to be collaborative, collective, col col uh, collective. But it's interesting because uh, Design Madrid actually done in a slightly different way. It's not compulsory, you have to interact with different users. And while V Taiwan police, they done it in a compulsory way. I will show you what the, there are two interactions. So the first one is you, you got to uh, say you agree, oppose, or pass of, of each uh, opinion. So that's the first step. And then the second one is um, if you want, this is optional, you can make a unique comment. And what it will become of after the the, the K means uh, algorithm to to do some statistic <coughs> calculation and the visualization, what you get is there is a consensus showing that. So say this is a case of Uber. So uh, eighty nine percent of the participants all agree with uh, this comment. So that's how they think this is the well. More precise, it's kind of rough consensus. So you you know you see this is kind of like a collaborative uh, process where based on several interactions and you try to you need to evaluate each one's comment and you show the co co interrelation. Um, so yeah, in design Madrid is slightly different because they they have several processes, but um, you don't. It's not compulsory. You can. You can work with other um, participants. They, 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 they are functions of community, or you can you can comment. But if you don't want, you can still do it in an individual way. So, yeah. And but all, all, only in the face of voting, you're probably going to view other you know proposals in a participatory budget, and you choose which one you want. Perhaps that's the compulsory interactions in Design Madrid, which I identify. So and also occurring. For Majeta, what Majeta said, it's really interesting because they also have an offline uh, way of uh, public participation. It's, it's the same. Uh, I'm, I'm being uh, critically reflecting on how digital these urban politics or processes, if you say, are. They are not actually not that digital. 
because um, say in Design Madrid, the citizen uh, uh, voting, votación, if you provide the options of paper ballot and uh, by post, actually more than 50 citizens uh, vote by that. And also in V Taiwan, um, what I show you, the digital one, it's just in the, in the early phase, like in, in the very, um, the second and when it comes closer to decision making, it's actually being done in the face-to-face -face deliberation. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's really interesting. Um, so there's some implications in, in the politics. Um, well, uh, so some of the key actors when I was in Taipei, they actually said V Taiwan is not going to change any political uh, relationship of uh, structures inside the government. So who makes decision? Hasn't been really changed by, by the V Taiwan? And I found that interesting. Does that represent a post-democracy? Or you know, is, it, is it real democracy through these digital platforms? It's, it's interesting to question. And also, but in Madrid, you can see there, well, the participatory, uh, they, they impose 100 million euro annually. So there's hundreds of projects from food bank, social housing for refugee victims of sexual violence, green spaces, community. So there are loads of them uh, coming through, burgeoning in Madrid, which is really interesting. But I'm not saying um, um, like it's it, like all homeless people or like disadvantaged dis people are using Madrid to, you know, to claim their right, whatever. But you can see their intention towards to perhaps like a cosmopolitan politics. But try to serve uh, people with different interests. And then at the end, I just want to say that perhaps in the future, uh, purely, there's no, no such thing as purely digital. See, we are, we are just sitting, you know, this, we are grounded and we ha we're having a conversation. So perhaps it's, it's interesting to think about how we can co different kind of network can coexist, coexist and co you know, co-live together rather than being like uh, exclusive. So this is uh, when I was in Madrid, I observed a different kind of, it's not digital, the network, but it's, 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 it's existing in our everyday life. And also in Taipei, but I'm going to end my presentation with this uh, observation. So in the evening of Pueblo Nuevo community, you can see kids screaming and playing on the street while adults are sitting on the steps of the front door chatting other homelier neighbors choose to chat with each other from the balcony. <coughs> yes, you have to speak a little more loudly than normal. So that doesn't have to be digital, but yeah. Thank you very much. <coughs> bueno, asombroso que contextos tan distintos, ¿no? Como Taipei, Helsinki, Barcelona, Madrid, ¿no? Pues finalmente a la hora de implementar eh, dispositivos de democracia directa y utilizando tecnologías digitales, se encuentren eh, enfrentados ¿no? ante los mismos retos y desafíos ¿no? de, de cómo buscar la inclusividad o cómo realmente también ser un poco eh, la correspondencia ¿no? de nuevos movimientos de entender la democracia y la política. Sin más, pasamos a lo que un amigo mío llamaba la ronda de pequeñas intervenciones, pero que espero que sean muy cortas y que, si pueden ser con preguntas para la mesa, pues podemos hacer que sea un debate más constructivo. Bueno, me encanta que no haya preguntas, entonces habrá que pensar en, en que entre los propios... Eh, panelistas se planteen alguna alguna duda a mí por ejemplo me, me sugería eh, mucha curiosidad el sistema de feedback de Helsinki eh, cómo de alguna manera podría luego eh, trasladarse a otras ciudades porque realmente yo creo que es una de las necesidades más importantes que hay el de captar eh, la pulsión de, de lo que ocurre en, en, en cada uno de nuestros entornos y eso igual transformarlo luego que sea un diagnóstico ¿no? para luego el, el, todos los mecanismos de, de propuesta ¿no? o sea que puede ser un buen complemento creo yo sí. 
Yes, the feedback system. Um, how can it be replicated in other cities? That was the question. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think uh, the technical solutions are uh, in, in this matter uh, quite easy to copy, paste to some other city. Um, actually, I've, I've heard of a colleague that Amsterdam is using some kind of an algorithm to direct the feedbacks in the city and this is, um, uh, this is something that we want to also try out in the future. Uh, also, we, well, in Finland we are cooperating with Finnish cities for example, in the field of text analytics. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm very uh, happy also to learn of the feedback systems of other cities. Uh, so you might maybe comment something now or then um, grab me later. Cannot participate. This is work. And also, I can add, while well, we try to make the digital technology work, uh, that um, uh, I'm really also keen on seeing if there's any open source platforms for feedback, because we are looking for a new feedback system currently. Okay. So well, I might have to Google that. We have. We will have one soon. We have in in Barcelona. There is a feedback system. It receives about 200,000 complaints and comments uh, per year. And, uh, but it's, I think it's very interesting the kind of debates we've, we've, we hold between uh, what we call the citizen uh, attention system or citizen uh, service, quality of service uh, kind of feedback and political uh, participation. And uh, it's interesting that at the, at the level of the software uh, configuration, uh, there are fundamental differences. And I just opened the debate here because something we didn't like about the software that was previously installed and running, and it wasn't free software, and so now and the new version will be free software. But still, from the point of view of democracy, it was a problem, which is whenever someone has a complaint, it is an individual uh, demand that is individually addressed and, and responded, at least in Barcelona. Maybe it's different in Helsinki. And so people is really disempowered. Uh, obviously, people complain, but they, it's just like quality of service. There is a lot of rubbish in my, in my street today for some reason, or, or, the, or the light is broken, or something that needs attention from a, a public servant. Uh, but it's very disempowering in, in the political sense of, I want to change and improve my city, and I wanted to do it with others, because our city is a shared ex collective experience. So if I just say I don't like this, uh, this is perhaps useful information, but it's, 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 it's not political in that other people cannot join uh, the solutions or, or, the, or the demands cannot be constructed collectively, and there is no transparency to force politicians to do something about it. And so, well, this is just an open debate. Where does feedback start and where does political participation start? May I comment? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. Um, and I think there is a need also to bring more um, transparency into the feedback giving. Um, just that I think that in the, like the very grassroots level, um, when someone uh, sends an individual complaint about uh, the trashies uh, in her street, uh, it's like a very important uh, interactional situation where like the way the city, city responds to your, uh, your uh, message, uh, it either like builds trust or diminishes trust of like, does my opinion really matter? Um, but yes, I, I agree that it's still like, it's, it's an indiv individual complaint. Yeah. Bueno, pues, ah. question we have, uh, please, we please. Have uh, yeah. <laughs> the master participate. Micro, micro para los traductores. 
Eh, sobre la cuestión de decidir, eh, bueno, una duda y un reto, en, en realidad. O sea, la duda es que, bueno, supongo que esto lo habéis resuelto, pero bueno, yo lo pregunto porque no lo, no lo habéis especificado. Eh, las propuestas pueden ser mejoradas por los comentarios que vienen después. Entonces, mi, aquí una pregunta sería... ¿Realmente ya, 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 ya consideráis la propuesta que llega al ayuntamiento? ¿Cómo, cómo, cómo calibráis esas mejoras? ¿no? Es decir, eh, que puedan haber, porque la propuesta puede ser muy votada, pero puede haber también algunos comentarios que implementen mejoras que también sean muy valoradas, y es valoración sí. alta en la propuesta, pero también en los comentarios. Y esto es, ¿quién juzga y quién decide si se implementa? ¿Sabes cuál es la que llega? Pero un momento, y el tema, y el, el reto sería... Y esto es lo que, claro, lo has citado y es verdad, yo estoy en Barcelona, también lo he usado un poquito, pero tampoco es que reconozco que no me ha explorado demasiado y la verdad es que tendría que hacerlo más. Pero la cuestión también del reto sería, son 30.000, pero habría que llegar a 300.000, por ejemplo. Sería, es decir, habéis planteado ya qué, eh, qué pasos también podéis dar para ampliar ese número a una cosa que sea, que le dé más legitimidad aún, ¿no? A todo lo que simplemente... Porque al final, cuanta más gente se, in, se implique, tampoco va a ser toda la población nunca, pero sí que podría ser un número más grande, creo yo. Estoy seguro. 30.000 son pocos para la ciudad de Barcelona. Sí, sí. Vale, ya está. Ok, thank you. Um, so, first question, well, first side of the question was how to improve UPOM proposals. So, one thing is the, the, there are two answers to that. One is how the city council has done it up to today. Uh, although it has done it in different manners, and the other is uh, what the software makes possible. So the software makes possible that a proposal is created collectively, but once it is published, it is very, very dangerous to open a proposal to modification, because I could sabotage a feminist initiative, for example, saying, oh yeah, I favor abortion or something, and Uh, when I start collecting supports or votes, I change it, and the final, I add a no and change completely my proposal. And maybe some other people have inhibited themselves on, 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 on making a similar proposal. So when a proposal is public and is open for support, it should never change. What we have as a new mechanisms that we are uh, uh, delivering uh, on Wednesday is, is a new functionality of the, of the platform is amends amendments just to so people can vote on changes over proposals and uh, well this is this, these are things but usually what happens is that uh, the simplest way in which uh, the system has been used and and this is good also to simplify things so the the, the infrastructure the, the platform is, is very com complex or, or makes possible to have uh, sophisticated uh, participatory mechanisms, but it is very often used in a simplified, direct, effective manner, which is good. And it's usually people make proposals, they cannot be modified, but when you as a government adopt this proposal, you slightly modify it to be more realistic, or maybe rewriting it because it's better shaping of legal terminology, or whatever, and there, you can incorporate comments and improvements of citizens over the original proposal. Uh, regarding the, 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 the numbers, how many people participated, it is, it is not very impressive in terms of uh, proportion of the population when we're talking about 30,000 people. Uh, the first American elections, which is one of the youngest democracies in the world, only had 5% participation. And people had to become aware of the power they had uh, when democratic mechanisms were in inaugurated in this sense. So I think this is uh, also, we need, we need some time to see how, how many people is convinced. And I think a very important aspect is that people observe and uh, can actually become aware that th their proposals became real. And because this is very different to, to the ways of, in which participation has been made before. And, and, and finally, there's something that Madrid's done very well, and we, we, we failed on doing it for some legal reasons that are solved now, but we haven't yet done, which is to call for a big uh, referendum on issues that we pushed by citizens' initiatives. And this, we couldn't do it, but this is very often a big mobilizer, and, and many people join the platform with this occasion, and once they are registered in the, in the platform, they uh, have an open set of possibilities they didn't knew they had before. So we expected the platform to reach a critical mass uh, in 
in the next few years, but obviously this is just uh, <laughs> something I anticipate, but it, it hasn't happened yet, and I think it's, it's a big challenge ahead. Muy bien, pues no sé si al final se anima alguien más. ¿No parece? No. Yo quería, además de lo que ha hecho Xavi antes, un poco de publicidad del encuentro del miércoles, por la tarde hay otro encuentro que también es interesante, que se llama Ciudades Democráticas, que es un encuentro que se ha venido organizando entre Madrid y Barcelona, aunque hasta ahora solamente se había celebrado en Madrid, con la colaboración de Barcelona, y este año lo hemos hecho en dos ciudades, en Madrid fue la mañana del viernes pasado, y termina con la tarde de este miércoles eh, bueno, un poco también con esta idea continuando con lo que estaba diciendo Xavier pues de la necesidad también de que nos acompañe un relato ¿no? y una forma nueva de entender la política, la participación democrática y que exista una nueva cultura ¿no? de, de democracia en nuestras ciudades. Y sin más, pues agradeceros vuestra paciencia e interés por la sesión.